evening and welcome to News Hour on the Sarolean Broadcasting Corporation. I am Fibian Swiel. Coming up in the news this evening, President Bio signs the African Continental Free Trade Agreement at the AU 31st Assembly in Mauritania. Honorable Veronica Kadisise acts as Speaker of Parliament. And NASIT officials update staff of the Sarolean Broadcasting Corporation on the shame. These and more lined up in news are on SLVC stay with us for news. News are on SLVC before the news. The Office of the Press Secretary, State House Freetown, has issued a notice inviting all members of the press to extending an invitation to attend a press conference on the launching of the government's transition team report, which will take place at State House on Wednesday, 4th July, that's tomorrow, 2018, at 10 a.m. News are on SLBC now for news. President Julius Marabio has signed the African Continental Free Trade Agreement at the 31st Ordinary Session of the African Union Assembly in Mauritania. The agreement, tabled by the Legal Council of the African Union Commission, Ambassador Dr. Namira Neng, would break the cross-border trade barriers for productive economic activities among African countries. How I will you went along and she filed in this report. The signing of the Continental Free Trade Agreements by President Julius Madabu is part of his ambitious agenda to ensure not only that Sierra Leone has access to the continental market. The move is also to use trade and investment as engine for economic revitalization in Sierra Leone. One of the objectives of the Continental Free Trade Agreement is to create a single continental market for goods and services. It calls for free movement of business persons and investment and thus paves the way for accelerating the establishment of the Continental Customs Union and the African Customs Union. Also, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement will look at expanding intra-Africa trade through better harmonization and coordination of trade liberalization and facilitation regimes and instruments across Africa in general. The signing of the Continental Free Trade Agreement has demonstrated his commitment to increase Sierra Leone's trade and investment opportunities within Africa, promote economic diversification, and accelerate industrial development through intra Africa trade. President Julius Madabi also held bilateral meetings with different heads of state at the summit. SBC TV News are in Freetown, how I must be reporting. Time over a decade, a woman has taken the seat of Speaker of Parliament. Honorable Veronica Kadisise of the Sierra Leone People's Party was on Tuesday elected by Parliament to act as Speaker in the absence of the substantive Speaker, Honorable Dr. Abbas Bundu, and the Deputy Speaker, Honorable Singapore Solomon Thomas. Nasiruddin Kouma, our parliamentary correspondent, tells us more. The 8th C of the 1991 Constitution provides that members of Parliament shall elect from among them an acting Speaker in the absence of the Speaker and the Deputy. Here is the Clerk of Parliament, Honorable Param Tarawali. Honorable Members, the House may therefore elect from amongst its members a person to take charge of today's proceedings. The Leader of Opposition, Honorable Chairman Majuba, seconded the nomination by the Leader of Government Business, Honorable Sidi Tunis, for electing Honorable Veronica Kadisise, Acting Speaker of the House. Take charge of today's proceedings. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those against, say no. Aye. <laughs> aye. MPs showered felicitations on the acting speaker whose leadership ability demonstrated over the years 
has won her the overwhelming parliamentary support, making an indelible ink on the history of the country's legislature. One of the senior members of parliament, Honorable Ibrahim Ben Kabo, had known the acting speaker for many years. She is the leader of the caucus for women in parliament here. She is also very, very uh, friendly. She does not care whether you are SLPP or APC. And um, she also has her own way of uh, winning her points. Uh, when she discovers that um, you are a Mende speaking person, she speaks Mende. When she discovers that you are a Tibni speaking person, she speaks Tibni. When she discovers that you are a Shabro speaking person, she speaks Shabro to get away. And she's been getting away for many times and I remember when I was Minister of Information and Communications and when she was chairperson of the Oversight Committee on Information and Communications she worked very very diligently with us at the Ministry and she was highly respected uh, both by us at the Ministry and the operators uh, on telecommunications. The first and last woman to have served as Acting Speaker of Parliament was Honorable Elizabeth Lavalley, with overwhelming compliments from colleague MPs, the acting speaker had these words of appreciation. Thank you for the accolades that you said about me. You see, sometimes it is good to be giving tributes or making tributes when people are alive. When somebody is lying they are dead, then you start to say, oh, But what you have demonstrated here this morning, I nearly shed tears when I am from both sides. This has shown that I was doing something good. The acting speaker will serve in a capacity until the return to the country of the speaker or his deputy. For SLBC News, Nasiruddin Koroma. Staff of the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation, SLBC, have been updated on the operations of Nasit Shim. The forum was held at the conference room of the SLBC New England. Lucian Ganda reports. The Public Affairs Division of the National Social Security and Insurance Trust, Nasit, is embarking on a robust public education exercise in a bid to update its members on the Nasit scheme. A team of three took the time to explain about the various forms of the scheme, which include registration forms, contribution forms from both the employee and the employer, update form in the case of status change. The need for employers to get yearly statements of accounts, the job history form, amongst other issues. Edwin Kamara, who dilated on the benefits implication, noted that social security is key to our society. He said the responsibility is distributed among the employee whose role is to do proper registration and updates. The employer who should ensure that the contributions are effective and NASIT itself who has the responsibility to ensuring the security of its members. He stressed on the crucial role of employers in paying their deducted 5% and 10% additional payment on a yearly basis. Abdul Bari, who explained the registration and job history, had this to say. For you to be a member of NASIT, you must be in employment. And when you are employed, you are asked to fill a NASIT form, which is the SS1A form, the Social Security form, which is this color one. For each member to have a Social Security number, he or she has to complete this form. This is the NASIT form for, for you to be a member of NASIT. We have the employer registration form, the institution registered. Nancy and we give, we give them an eager number 
All establishments do have their year numbers. Also, under that institution, employees are registered. So we register the employees and generate their social security numbers. So we go to contribution. After registration, then the employer will start to deduct your, 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 the, the contribution for nursing. 5% is deducted from your earnings. Normally, we advise employers to deduct the 5% from the basic salary. 10% is being paid by the employer. So it's 5% deducted from source, then 10% being paid by the employer. However, the team reminded members of staff of the corporation that retirement qualification is age 60 and that one must have contributed for at least 180 months to qualify for retirement pension. Benefit package include retirement, invalidity, and survivors. An interactive session with question and answer from part of the session. Some of the members of staff of the corporation raised various concerns about the possibility of loan facilities for long-term contributors and the need for NASIT to promptly update its members through automated means when employers refuse to pay contribution for their employees. Newsa, Lucian Ganda reporting. For some weeks now, photos have been circulating the social media that a particular company has ordered rotten rice into the country and that the rice is being sold in the markets. While many a time these rumors are found to be untrue, as evidence cannot be substantiated. To know about the rise in question, Asmiuba paid a visit to Samco Trading Company Warehouse, the business that imported the rice at Kaniki. is in West Africa. Whenever the issue of rotten rice is mentioned, it raises alarm for the consuming public. The rice in question was imported by Samco Trading Limited, a company that has been importing rice for more than two decades. When SLBC visited the company's warehouse in Kanike, it found out that indeed there were bags of rice that had gone bad but had been separated from the general consignment. Lansana Kemobayo informed SLBC that the rice in question went bad when it was being transported from the port to the warehouse. Fortunately, um, of course, we know usually when this rice usually comes from the port, the means of transportation to our warehouses, uh, there was this consignment really that arrives with this uh, rice, which is 100% broken. And there was rain on that day. We assumed that it was during the process of transporting the rice from uh, the port to our warehouse is like some bags got soaked, you know, and obviously, you know, um, the 100% the broken rice is really, really fragile. Of course, we never took notice of that because we did supply the rice to our customers because we are more or less dealing in wholesales. He said when they realized that some of their rice load had saturated with water, they informed the standard bureau and removed the wet rice. So we took upon ourselves and also took a bag, two bags, and sent these bags to the standards bureau for them to, you know, to do their analysis. So as a result, to we'll know really what's the nature, what's the situation. These bags of rice are packed in this corner as a way of separating them from the ones that are edible. The company imports rice from India, Pakistan, Paraguay, Thailand, and Vietnam. What about the other consignments? in the store. How safe and protected are they? Lansana Kemo Bayo again. So as you can just look over there, you'll see it. it's been separated far apart from the other rice because we don't want it to be mixed with any other rice. The Consumer Protection Agency normally monitors warehouses to ensure that rice importers comply with standards set by the government. Ibrahim Kabia is the president of the Consumer Protection Agency and he has been monitoring the situation. So at one of uh, these trips they made, they noticed that uh, Samco has some rice that is unsafe for human consumption, maybe not due to his fault particularly, but uh, again, uh, it so happened that uh, when they bumped into uh, uh, 
uh, Samco store at uh, Klein Town, they find out that uh, some part of the rice, a quantity of it, was not good for human consumption because it was uh, wet, according to Samco, when they interviewed him, and that uh, they were trying to see, to separate it. But it came also to the notice of the Israeli Standards Bureau, who promptly took an action. Uh, he sent an office official there who sealed the store so that nobody will buy that rice that is unsafe for human consumption. When the rice got soaked, its color and smell changed, warranting an examination. Look, it's smell her. Smell her. Take her, smell her, make you see. You got a charm on her. How safe is the remaining rice in the store? Ibrahim Kabir explained. Uh, I don't want to vouch for that. Um, the reason being that uh, they've not had finished doing the assessment in fishing out uh, the bad one and leaving the good one. They only started maybe about one or two hundred bags that, was, that has been packed in one of the corners of the store. But they should do more. Uh, and secondly, they should even look at the one that is not soaked so that at the end of the day we don't get cross-contamination, which also is a hindrance to the health of people. When contacted, the head of Standard Bureau told SLBC that the Bureau is indeed aware of the rice that went bad, and from their examinations, they found out that the rice in question is not fit for human consumption and had ordered the company to break up the rice in order not to sell it to the public. As the company continues to sort out the good from the bad rice, they believe they are putting maximum efforts not to sell the unwanted rice to the public. Ironically, Sierra Leone is endowed with abundance of fertile lands and rainfall, but it cannot feed its population from locally grown rice. The reason why government subsidizes hundreds of millions of dollars on rice importation. Now you can see why the country is in dire need of foreign exchange. For SLBC News, Asmi Uba. The Ministry of Information and Communications held a consultative meeting with the Media Reform Coordinating Group and the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists to discuss the need for the repeal of the 1965 Public Order Act. The meeting was held at the Ministry of Information and Communications Conference Room at UE Building. Esther Marisamoa attended and she filed in this report. Of the 1965 Public Order Act is a law which imposes criminal accountability for defamatory and seditious libel publication and has been viewed by members of the Fourth Estate as a bad law and is calling for its replacement. The Media Reform Coordinating Group, in collaboration with Sludge, has been meeting with various stakeholders to discuss its repeal as promised by President Bureau's New Direction Manifesto. The Ministry of Information is key in the repeal process. President of Sludge, Kelvin Lewis, urges for the act to be repealed. According to him, the independent media commission should be empowered to have absolute authority. The King Town community is one that is not seen as an environment that floods during the rains. The heavy downpour on Sunday, 1st July 2018, led to flooding in King Tom. This community lost property and incurred lots of damage. Millicent Messi Lunge filed in this report. Over the years, flooding during the raining season has been a concern to many. In 2015 and 2017, flooding claimed the lives of hundreds and property worth over millions of leons. According to environment experts, the recent flooding occurred because of human activities like deforestation, land degradation, and many more. This is July, and the rains have started intensifying. Many communities have started complaining as a result of the heavy downpour. One community that is affected is the King Tom community. For the Ture, a resident at King Tom community said, Barracks Street never experienced flooding 
prior to the establishment of Sky Company in their community, but during its expansion, the drainage was blocked and garbage now settles in a particular place, causing flooding when it rains. I am 43. I am residing at Barak Street, Kintom. Since my childhood life here, there has been no flooding. But since I returned from Guinea, I met a building which they call Sky Company, and the building is extended to the digging edge, which now leads to the flooding. Bome, that used to be a dumping site, is now sold to gardeners for cultivation and also human excretion flows in front of our houses, which is dangerous to our health and properties. This blockage leads to the flooding and our lives are at risk, especially at night. I am calling on the attention of stakeholders and the government to put measures in place and other amenities. He maintained that vehicles that empty garbage at Pome do not enter the deposit sites to empty the garbage, and now the site has been sold to gardeners, causing human excretion to flow along the drainage, affecting residents as it floats down to their homes. He said that if measures are not put in place to address the problem, their lives and property would be at risk. He called on the attention of stakeholders and the government to come to their aid by expanding their drainage and other amenities to be put in place for the rains. Amnesty International has launched a report titled A Force for God, Restrictions on Peaceful Assembly and Impunity for Excessive Use of Power by the Sierra Leone Police. The report states that no police officer has been held accountable to criminal proceedings over the past decade for any of the cases documented. The report, conducted into human rights situation in Sierra Leone for over a decade, is a research done in Freetown, Kono, Kabala and Bo, was launched at the Rookfields Hotel. Daphne Kima Macaulay attended Shina Reports. Police restriction on the rights to peaceful protest has been described by Amnesty International reports as a human rights violation. According to Amnesty International, the restriction on peaceful protest have been based on the interpretation and implementation of national laws including the Public Order Act. The Amnesty International reports outlined many cases of human rights abuses in the country, including a young boy that was shot dead and two students injured in Bo, when the police fired live bullets to disperse on armed students protesting against the closure of their university and other cases during the just concluded general elections. Very interesting. I was just speaking to a police officer yesterday and he said to me, you know what, this is good what you're doing. We need to be held to account. Our role is to protect life and property, not to kill people. There are definitely many police officers I've spoken to who are happy about what we are doing because this is what they themselves are saying. In fact, when we met the former Inspector General last year, he was very open about the challenges within the police and some of the issues they have. The current Inspector General, when we met him again in January, um, he's open to these issues. So we hope to have more engagement with the police. We're not here against them, and we hope to continue this dialogue. The reports recommended that the president condemns any use of excessive force by the police and ensure that all those suspended be responsible, including those with command responsibility should also be held responsible. One of the recommendations in the report states that government should review all the cases in the report and ensure a thorough and impartial investigations are carried out for officers ordering excessive use of force during police protests in the country. The report also recommends that parliament review legislature policies and practices relating to public assemblies and demonstrations. Amnesty International says the report was reviewed eight times by other human rights organizations in the country, including the Human Rights Commission, and interviewed 105 people. Among them were police officers, 
victims and eyewitnesses, adding that governments provide compensation and medical aid to victims. For SLBC News, Daphne Kimomakoli reporting. As a way to help mitigate housing problems in the country, the Sierra Leone Housing Corporation, SALHOC, and the Ministry of Economic Planning and Development have briefed journalists and other state actors on the housing sector strategy paper. The paper is a research that was mutually developed to address issues of quality and affordable housing gaps in the country. Rose Kodima Stevens tells us more. Has caused a vast displacement of population, which, according to policy researcher Jani Haiken, has played a major role in the distribution and use of natural resources and infrastructural development. The city of Freetown at the time used to house only around 300,000 people, but now the city is struggling to meet basic needs, including housing, electricity, sewage, and water. Land grabbers and encroachers in the city have constructed structures into protected forest areas, hilltops, and coastal areas causing soil erosion, which resulted to the August landslide. To help provide solutions to the above-mentioned minis, Sierra Leone Housing Corporation, in collaboration with the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development in the meeting, presented the housing sector strategy paper for dissemination. Addressing the gathering, General Manager Salhok Lavren Buya Kamara said that the housing sector strategy paper will illuminate the issues both in the eyes of the public, those at the strategic level and private sector, noting that it will be most relevant for all to appreciate some emerging issues that plagued the housing sector in the city. Urbanization in Africa has largely been translated into rising, rising slow establishments. Sierra Leone is no exception. The proliferation of informal settlement in our towns and cities places immense pressure on utilities and other waste management issues. Currently, there are 101 informal settlements nationwide from the UNFP country. Another factor is the property market conditions. The housing supply has been fought by the difficulty in accessing mortgage finance. Ironically, there has been a growth at the top of the market. She further that land has become a highly prized jewel in the western area and that the high cost of finance which stands at an average of 17 percent makes it extremely difficult to service the housing loan among others in managing the expectation gaps she said the corporation is required to develop mechanisms to meet the housing needs of government employees as well as competing with real estate developers the Minister of Planning and Economic Development, Nabila Tunis, stated that following the devastating landslide of August last year, which claimed lives and destroyed properties worth billions of leons, their planning unit began a strong work relationship with Salhok to better understand issues surrounding the housing sector. The new direction development agenda is committed to addressing the housing challenge that has fought Sierra Leone and families for decades, especially in urban communities. In his statement to Parliament, His Excellency, the President, Julius Madabio, he reaffirmed the government's intentions to, first of all, encourage the establishment of home finance institutions, secondly, to train young people in the use of local materials and appropriate technology for housing construction, Thirdly, to design and implement a national program for housing. And fourthly, to encourage a large-scale local production of building materials. Presenting the housing sector strategy paper, Philip Spencer said housing is a fundamental element of one's well-being and quality of life. Uh, we presented on uh, two main points. The two main points were quantifying the housing affordability in Sierra Leone, uh, as well as getting at the housing needs. 
Uh, so for housing affordability, uh, we were able to, to pin down what it means to be a low income uh, household uh, in Sierra Leone and offer um, numbers for future housing projects so that they can specifically target those who are in need. Um, so we nationally we would say that a low income household would be able to afford a house between 3,000 to 5,000 USD, assuming that there is adequate financial insurance in place. When we're thinking about uh, housing needs, uh, our analysis today suggested that there is uh, over 800,000 deprived households uh, in Sierra Leone, uh, and that equates to approximately 500,000 housing units that are uh, in need uh, for uh, for Sierra Leoneans. The Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Rahman Radu Swari, has held a consultative meeting with the Media Reform Coordinating Group and the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists, SLAJ, to discuss the need for repeal of the 1965 Public Order Act. The meeting was held at the Ministry of Information and Communications Conference Room at UE Building. Esther Mali Samoa was in attendance. She tells us more. We apologize for the sound quality of that insert. You're watching News Hour on the Serlin Broadcasting Corporation. Business News up next after this break. Hello and welcome. It's Business Update with me, Wilmaina Bukul. Cool. From the business desk, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has officially given the green light to the acceptance of China's currency, the Yuan, into IMF's foreign exchange basket. Here is a report by Lucien Genda. The rise of this agency, the move paves the way for the IMF to place the Yuan a par with the US dollar. This is the latest in a series of global developments that threatens to eliminate the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. Financial experts predict this announcement will trigger one of the profound transfers of wealth. The IMF holds supreme power and is one of the most secretive and powerful organizations in the world. It monitors the financial health of more than 100 and 85 countries. They establish global monetary rules and provides bailout assistance to bankrupt countries. The move by the IMF to give green light to the yuan into its foreign exchange basket will make the Chinese currency a viable global alternative to the US dollar. Business News, Lucy Anganda. Freetown. Hilton, Freetown Cape Sierra Hotel, is now into its final stages of construction. Here's a report by Lucien Ganda. According to a release by all Sierra Union Ideas group of companies, the hotel facilities include 200 guest bedrooms, 50 meter edged swimming pool, a 450 scalar banquet hall, jetty, for access to direct boats to Lunge, amongst other several facilities. Construction started in 2014, but was distracted for 15 months due to the Ebola scourge. Business News, Lucian Ganda, Freetown. 
Black market dollars changes around the central business district say over the past months or year, there has been no stability in the price of dollar and other foreign currencies. They say they are not to take the blame for the hike in the exchange rate. They call on government to put measures in place to curb the menace. Concerned citizens have expressed dissatisfaction over the way and manner of food and non-food items are in the increase, which according to them is due to the increase in price of dollar in the country. And that's all coming to you from the business updates in Freetown. I've been William Mainabuku. That's all. Thank you, Willie Maina and the Business Desk for the business news. And now let's join our entertainment producer, Mohamed King Milan Bangua, for the latest entertainment news. Save the Girl Child is a movie produced by Salvation Music House Production by two young biological sisters, Sia Prosperity and Kumba Progress, Kai Fine, both 17 and 15 years respectively, and pupils of the Ebb Modern High School, Calbatown. The script of the movie was written by 15 years old Kumba Progress. She said the concept of the movie came about how young girls undergo sexual and domestic abuse. Okay, Save the Girl Child, the the main thing about it for girls, they were determined to be very important people in society. Mary was given away by early marriage, Mary was given away into early marriage. Uh, Esther involved in sexual activity with a class teacher and um, being two, she was saved and Sarah, she involved in sexual activity also with a boy of the same age because of expensive gifts and stuff. Sia Prosperity, who is the elder sister of Kumba, took the role in the movie as being two. Who's been to in the movie? Been to is the only girl I save because it's four of us only been to save, and because my father was very strict, he did not allow. If you want to go over there, I said, please come quick. Doesn't like that. It took too long. Yes. The cast in the movie were friends of progress and prosperity in school, and the whole movie took three weeks for completion. But one would wonder how these girls were able to finance this movie. Uh, for, us, yeah. for us, for our parents to say that. See that yes, we are serious with this thing. We have to like gather our lunch because they want to see the seriousness in us mm -hmm. for them to pour their money into the thing. So when they give us our lunch, we gather it, we just it's small amount of it and gather it. So when we give it to our parents, they said, Oh yeah, you guys are serious <laughs> now. So they pour their money into it, use some of it, but ours was just tiny. So but for the matter of fact that it was from our own pocket, they appreciate that and say that, oh, these guys are serious. But they do the bulk of it. They do everything, but our own money was there. So that we can feel it that we now really save the girl it. child has been completed and finally edited but ask how possible is it for the public to watch this movie surprisingly these young kids are still looking for sponsors What's your interest what are you really looking for like we are trying so that it's not we we don't only want the movie to be limited we want it to spread yeah, out we want to not only like in in uh, Calbar town only the movie no yeah, but everywhere so it not even in Sierra Leone. Well, we are looking for sponsors because we, our parents have all paused to do the movie, to do the shooting, the editing. So we are now in the launching process. So we want sponsors, those who will be able to sponsor us so that we can do the yeah. launching. You bless whose real name is Uma Kanu is a young 19 years old gospel singer residing at Gloucester Community in Freetown. You bless said it has always been a passion for him to do music since he was a kid. Though he used to listen to different types of music and enjoy them, yet gospel music is his number one choice of music. You bless was inspired by Salonian pastor singer Pastor Matthew and Nigerian singer Joe Praise, whose type of songs are said minister to him and console him spiritually. 
In 2017, You Bless released a six tracks album titled Unlimited Blessings, and this album was recorded at the Uncle Joe studio. Finally, he has decided to release his first music video from the album, and the title of the video is called Celebrate. But what is it about to celebrate? When you listen to the song and the lyrics, it's full of messages that we must serve God who is never too late. It's like, let's come together and celebrate. It doesn't matter what difficult things you've gone through. You know that God is there. Surely see you through. And God will see you through. I'm lovely to praise your name, oh daddy. And I will lovely to say thank you. And I will talk about the good things that you've done for me. Oh, papa. Thanks to Mohammed King Milan Bangura for the entertainment news. And now let's join Esther Marie Samura for sports updates. It's a hearty welcome to Sports Update on News R. I am Esther Maisa Mora. In this edition of Sports Update, as Liverpool Football Club continues to celebrate its 125th anniversary, the club's main sponsor, Standard Chartered Bank, Leone, has launched its Liverpool 2018 campaign for its Visa and Gold Debit Card holders. We had the stand a chance to win a VIP trip to Anfield, Liverpool to watch the live Liverpool match next season. The campaign which was launched in Freetown will last for three months. Ibrahim Samura has more. The Liverpool football campaign is part of the bank's continued celebration of the club's 125th anniversary and it gives the customers of the Visa debit card holders the chance to win a VIP trip to watch a live Liverpool match in Anfield, England. According to the Chief Executive Officer, Standard Chartered Bank, Idrissa Kamara, the launch of the Liverpool football campaign is the unique way of making savings more exciting by giving their Visa debit card holders more value for money. With the LFC promotional campaign we are launching today, we intend to make banking more exciting by giving our customers a second chance to win a VIP trip to Anfield to watch a live Liverpool match next season. It is good when your standard chartered Visa debit card can take you to Anfield and the LFC campaign is a unique way of making savings more exciting by giving our esteemed Visa debit card holders more value for money. Liverpool Football Club Mr. Kamara Winton is one of the world's best known football clubs saying that it has over 240 million passionate fans across Standard Chartered's core market in Asia, Africa and the Middle East. He said the bank has been committed to Sierra Leone for over 123 years in building the economy. The head of corporate affairs, branding and marketing, Standard Chartered Bank Kumba Ganga, said one of the requirements for holders of the Visa debit card is that must have a threshold of 3 million liens in their account. She said the move is to continue to celebrate Liverpool successes with their customers and rewarding. How, how do they enter? Okay, by just opening for the new clients, by just open, opening a standard chartered bank account with a minimum balance of three million euros, okay, and during the month, okay, spent three million euros, still maintaining that three million euros balance, or right, automatically you qualify for the door for that month, okay? And then existing clients, those that we have now, okay, that have 
already have the Visa, Platinum, and Gold debit cards. Okay, all they need to do is deposit and maintain six million units in their account, and then also spend with their debit cards three million units monthly. In the 2017-2018 Premier League, Liverpool came fourth and runners-up in the European Championship League.